I am going to show you my method for removing backscatter for an Im from an image. I'm going to start with this jellyfish image that Andy Martinez captured in Eastport. First thing I want you to notice is these two little boxes on either side of the histogram. They, they should have white lines around them. If they don't, you can just click on them and the light, white lines will come up. And what this does is it shows you when your image has areas that are too bright or too dark. And uh, my first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the auto button to apply an auto exposure from Adobe Camera Raw to this image. And you can see it really didn't go the way I would have expected or I would have wanted it to go. So I'm going to reduce the exposure to where I'm comfortable. And you can see here that there's still some red areas in the center of the jellyfish's body and that says that these areas are too bright and to fix that you just hold the alternate key grab the white slider slide it to the left until that all goes away now to see if there's any black areas that need adjustment you can grab the, the black slider and you can see in the bottom right hand corner and a little bit along the left hand corner those little green areas you just slide the slider to the right till they go away and then I'm going to apply some contrast and open the image. Once the image is open, the first thing that I want to do is make the black background black. So I'm going to do a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to click on the black eyedropper and I'm going to look for an area that has no backscatter in it and click to make the background black. Well, that's good, but I want to make some other changes. So I'm going to grab this little hand in the properties dialog box for the curves layer and it has an up and down arrow on it. I'm going to go here in the middle. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it up to make this area brighter. But I also want to make the jellyfish's body brighter. So I'm going to click up here and drag this up a little. And I want these little curly cute tentacles to be brighter. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click there and drag upwards. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I like that. So before I can do the next step, which is to apply an action, I have to flatten these two layers so that they are only one. To do that, you go into Layer, Flatten Image, and you can see now it's only a single background layer. I'm going to go into Actions, and I'm going to pick an action called Backscatter with Snapshot. There'll be a link to this below, and Andy also has links that he can provide. I'm going to run the action. It's going to take a snapshot of the picture and then on another original layer it's going to apply a dust and scratches filter. Now the only thing you have to watch with this is that if this radius is set too high it'll take all the noise out of the background but the noise in the jellyfish will still be there and there could be a noticeable difference and if there is you can just use commands, you know, go back in your history palette to when you started, and then lower the radius to get something that is more suitable for you. For me right now, I'm going to leave it at 30. And what it's going to do is it's going to take me to the history brush, and it's going to set the brush to darken. Now, I want to work on a bigger area at one time, so I'm going to make my brush a lot larger. And then I'm going to zoom out to full screen by doing control zero. And then I'm going to start brushing away the backscatter that is going to be made lighter by this particular setting. And try to be fairly methodical with it so that you get all the areas that need to be gotten out. Stay away from the jellyfish's body. We can zoom in to do some of that as we get going. Go a little further along. Now right there I hit the end of the tentacle so I'm going to do control Z to go backwards and probably a good thing when you're doing this is to stop every so often as long as you have the backscatter out that you wanted because when you do control Z it'll take you back to the last time that you released the mouse button and for me it was all of the backscatter uh, brushing I was doing so now I'm going to just stop from time to time and then when I use the back control Z button to go backwards, it'll only take me back to the last time that I released the mouse button. So as long as you're okay 
with what you're doing, you know, that's a good way to do this to keep you from having to redo a lot of extra work. So I'm staying away from the body of the jellyfish, coming up around, and I've got this pretty good. I've got all the big areas done. So now I'm going to zoom in on the jellyfish by doing Control Plus. I'm going to make my brush much smaller so that I can work around the edges of the jellyfish without actually going on to the jellyfish itself and clear out as much of the backscatter that's close to the body as I can. Don't worry about the big spots that you can't get out. We'll get to those later. Try to make it get as close as you can to the jellyfish without going on to it. Take as much of this backscatter out as you can. Now, you're going to have to decide with your own images on how much work you want to do to get rid of backscatter. Now, it can be very time consuming, and if the image is worth it, like this one is, it's worth spending the time to get rid of the backscatter. But if the image is so so, um, I wouldn't waste my time with it. In the end, you may not be happy with the results, so make your own decisions on the way that you want to go with this. Moving up here again. Get as much of this out as I can. But later on, we'll be using a few different tools that will help us in areas that you can't get to very easily or areas where the backscatter is not coming out the way you'd like it to. Make the brush smaller so that I can work in some smaller areas here without going on to the tentacles and things. Now I can even go onto the body of the jellyfish to work on some of these things. And basically, I won't drag with my history brush because it, then it tends to make the jellyfish blurrier and I don't want to do that. I'm just going to kind of click here and there wherever there's a piece of backscatter. Some of these areas like these here, it really won't take any, all of it out. But we'll do that with another tool as we move along. I'm just looking now to get rid of the big bright spots. I'm not going to worry too much about ones that are on the edges because we'll come and get those later with a different tool. Get out the big ones, the ones that are very prominent. I, look, I tend to look at the ones that are really white and that stand out. could spend a lot more time on this but I don't want this to be an hour tutorial with most of it me taking out the tiniest bits of backscatter so what we're going to do is we're going to move on to our next tool and so I'm going to maximize the image size by doing control zero and we're going to pick a tool called the clone tool the clone tool you pick a source for where you want um, your brush to pick information from so I'm going to pick this area right here where there's no backscatter. Hold down the alternate key, click on my mouse button and drag it so that the source comes from where the little cross is. And then it applies that source to the area where the brush is. So I'm trying to pick areas where there's no backscatter. You can change the direction just by clicking on the alternate key and dragging your mouse in a different direction. And sometimes you need to do this to be able to cover uh, to get the backscatter out in any dimensions because you need to have be picking from a source that has no backscatter. So once I do this, I can go to the side here and, and just keep going along and 
cleaning the area out of the backscatter, trying to stay away from the jellyfish as much as I can. Well, it's just trying to stay away from it. Now I'm going to go down with my source file and I'm going to clean up more of this backscatter straight down so that I don't mess with the jellyfish here. And just keep dragging along and knocking out as much of the backscatter as I can. You can see here we're doing this is doing a pretty good job now not always possible to use the clone tool to, do, to get everything out but on an image like this where the background is very black it works really well so again stay away from the jellyfish we'll zoom in in a little bit to try and get that out everything out of there all right now i'm going to pick my source from way back here to move into here because I want to make sure that I can get black areas in there so that I can work on that side. So I'll be picking a source from the right hand side. And as long as the source doesn't run into the jellyfish or outside the image area, uh, you're good to go. The if the source ends up outside the image area, it's not going to do anything at the brush. So you just want to make sure, like if I go out of here, it's not going to do anything. So I want to make sure that my source stays within the image. Clean up as much backscatter as I can. Change directions so that I can move along better. straight down now or down at an angle whoops hit control Z because I went on to the jellyfish and go back here All right, so we've done a pretty good job of cleaning up the big areas around the jellyfish. So now I'm going to zoom in by doing Control Plus, and I'm going to make my brush smaller by using the left bracket key, and pick my source here by holding the alternate key, and working closer to the jellyfish now to try to get some of the backscatter out there. Here I'm going to go on the other side, and go down a little bit, Pick up some of this. I want to get that out of there. Do that. I'm going to use the space bar to move my, myself down around the jellyfish. And the areas here, I'm going to go pick a source here, clear this out. Now, you can work in the areas inside the jellyfish here. And to be safe, you can actually pick a source way out here and move it here. And this way you don't have to worry about when you're working in this area that the jellyfish is going to, you're going to be picking up things that you shouldn't pick up. And I'm going to want to work from here. Well, whoop, control Z to fix that. Hold the alternate key, choose my source, and I'm going to work in here. Make my brush a little smaller with the left bracket key. And, oh, made a mistake, I'm gonna go back again. And you can see I'm getting a lot of this out of here. I'm getting as much as I can. I'm gonna go in a different direction now from here up. This one 
and you can see this does a really nice job now got a little bit to do here so I'm going to come from here all right so that's I'm going to stop right here for this you could do more if you want but I'm going to use another tool called the spot healing brush and I'm just going to use it to pick out some of this stuff here that I want to get rid of and after you use the clone tool and the spot healing brush a little bit you'll get very used to it and they work really well you can get rid of some of these bigger spots here that we we're able to make uh, lighter but not get rid of completely and the great thing about the spot healing brush is that you can work on the edges of the image with it without it really messing up your edges too much so we're going to go in here all right well, i could spend a lot more time on this but i'm not going to um, what i'm going to do at this point is just finish up a little bit here I probably would spend more time on some of these places but again I don't want this video to get crazy long because I'm trying to make this image perfect so you can see here but you see the technique and how it works so at this point I'm going to stop my backscatter removal and I'm going to show you what I would do next with this image and it's a pretty powerful plug-in. I love the way it works, so you'll see what I mean in just a second. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom out completely by doing Control Zero, and let's look at where we started here to where we are here. Big difference. Next thing I'd like to do is sharpen this because I'm not happy with the sharpness. So I'm going to use a plug-in called Sharpen AI, made by Topaz Labs. There'll be a link below and Andy will have the links. So I'm going to click on this plugin. It will open up this image in its own screen. And there are all different types of uh, sharpening that you can do with this particular plugin. For right now, I have it on too soft and very blurry. The preview is updating here. And once it's finished, you can take and drag this line over the image and see the difference now that it's sharpened and I want you to especially look right here in the center of the jellyfish and you can see that it was on the soft side and now it's way better so once you're happy I mean you can make adjustments to this and uh, you know at this point too you could do things like add grain if you find that, that there's a big difference between the noise and the jellyfish in the background I'm just going to click apply and sometimes this can take a little bit of time depending on how fast or slow your machine is and how much actual processing it has to do on the image in this particular case it's a fair amount so all we can do is wait until it's finished okay now it's done and this is our finished sharpened image with backscatter removed i mean there's a couple little places in here i guess i could do a little bit more removal on but what I would do at this point if you want the if you like the image the way it is and you want to leave it that way that's great I would if it was my image I would crop it and I would probably do a vertical crop and get in tight on the image but again this is all personal preference and I would tend to do a crop just like that but you can also crop it horizontally and I'll do control Z to go back and the issue that I have with this cropping horizontally is that you're going to tend to have a lot of negative space around the image and I really think it would crop much better as a vertical but that's up to you so that's it I hope you enjoyed the tutorial